Everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Uh, last time I did this, I don't know what this does. Oh, neat! It's a whole area up here. Is this... Ah. The green lens. Okay. Red Swordmaster? Sorry, I turned this way, way up. I wanted to be able to hear myself in a... Uh, in my playback. And I just wanted to make sure that the audio was a good level of volume. And it appears to be. Dude, I was so over you. That a stinger? God damn. All right. You've had your fun. Okay. What? Can't make that jump? The things that they... I complained about this last time, but the things that they do and in don't invisible wall in this game are really kind of weird. Kind of backwards. Okay. What happens if I take this off? Oh. Interesting. Let's do pure green. And then let's go do the other one. I feel like I'm doing a big puzzle section so they can pad out time before I go fight the final boss of this zone. Really, guys? Come on, all I've got is this whip. Can I borrow one of your guys' swords? Make it even on me? Guys, please. Dude, not cool. I don't care, Patrick. I know they paid a lot of money for you. It wasn't worth it. Like, I'm thinking about what I said last time when I was just bitching about, like, all of the dumb shit that Patrick Stewart has said and, like, how none of it has amounted to anything. I recently played, um, uh, Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water with my wife. And for whatever reason, after every single level, there's a, there's a fucking synopsis of what just happened and then you go to start the next one and there's a brief synopsis of what they're gonna do and then like sometimes there's another synopsis of what happened in the level like after the level so like playing a, a level in Fatal Frame is at minimum going to give you three descriptions of what happens one of which first hand when you play it and then a, a, a guide by two different you know a guide written for two different points in the game, in-game. And then sometimes, you'll see a thing of like... Sometimes you'll see a thing of like... A note in-game. Like, a note in-game in the next chapter will describe... What happened in the chapter prior. So like, sometimes you'll see four or five descriptions of what happens in a chapter. And only one of them is playing it. Uh, I've been using shadow magic constantly. I'm afraid of what it's done to me. Dark thoughts cloud my mind. The more I use the magic, the more I enjoy killing. Dear God, I feel so good to butcher these creatures. But the dreams, they haunt me every night and I cannot face them any longer. What's to become of me? I have strayed too long from the light. It's too far from the light. And soon I fear I become a harbinger of evil myself. Stuff. Um, 
Anyway, sometimes, because Fatal Frame is a fairly freaky psychedelic game with a lot of weird, confusing imagery, sometimes you will appreciate all the weird shit going on because the game just is that confusing and you are happy to have just a something telling you, okay, so here's what happened in that cutscene. The Blood Moon rose, which of course means that the Dark Priestess can appear and then the like this isn't a spoiler for fatal frame by the way i'm just using an example here but like you'll see some weird crazy like imagery like imagine if bloodborne had that like because i am drawing from bloodborne here because there's a lot of stuff in fatal frame that reminds me of bloodborne right saw it on the floor i see it don't yell at me i'll shatter like glass um let's fill up on this one too just in case Oh man. Okay. Cool. But like using Bloodborne as an example, it's like, oh yeah, the blood moon rose, and with that appearance, the uh the maiden of of the blood appeared. And then uh she wept for her, her fallen child and you know, you're reminded of your mission to deal with that child. Throw the holy water! Come on, Gabriel. This isn't... I hate these things. Shut up, Patrick. All right. I'm just fighting them in the wrong way. I don't hate them. What I need to be doing is this. I wonder if that is a Devil May Cry reference, because it looks like they're doing drive. Anyway, yeah, like, looking at Devil... Devil May Cry. Looking at Maiden of Blackwater, sometimes it's okay to have those descriptions just to explain what the fuck you're looking at. Because it's, it is very confusing, and it's nice to have the little just, hey, here's what you missed. Here's what's going on. Here's what you couldn't possibly understand. Because you're playing this game as it's happening, and you're not watching a lore you know, channel explain what the hell you're seeing. And so to me, that's fine, but like, there's so many problems that arise from... Okay, so what happens if... Yeah. Yep, I know that that door opens. Thank you. I do this one. I assume the big door is all three. No! I missed the thing. It's not fair. I never lose. Shut up. You're a cheat. And you're going to pay. But that game has a catch-up mechanic. Now, play with my toy. It's Oogie Boogies. Like, clearly, right? Yeah. 
Does anyone actually play the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas um, like licensed beat em up? It was actually really good. I gotta get to him. Be right with you, sir. I'm a little annoyed that I missed that thing, but I guess it's okay. I wonder what happens if you turn on all three of them. How dare you break my toys! You threw them at me, dude! Fucking shit, kids. All right, Kratos, we get it. You're angry. You love ripping and tearing things. I, I can see it. I understand. I've watched you ripped out two, like, felt hearts now, and... Okay. I think it is kind of cool that they have the weird little spikes on the top. Oh, mashing X this time. Mixing it up, not mashing A. How crazy. No! What did you expect, man? I told you I was going to win! I don't believe it. Nobody beats me! Do you hear? Nobody! Don't resist. Embrace. Is this going to be worth it? Death. Like, oh, well, yeah, nobody beat me. Well, so one guy beat me, but then I, I shocked him to death. Like, wow, you sure got him. Marie. Fight it, Gabriel. This is not your time. Not now. Too much relies on you. Mm hmm. I have nothing left. I have done questionable things. I have failed. I love the beaver tear uh, the beaver tail hairstyle. I envy you. Is she I just gonna give up? Both. That's lame. I wanted to stake her. I know she has the body of a child, but she's also got a vampire. I don't want to play anymore. Is this going to be that weird vampire diary shit where, like, somebody who was turned into a, a, a vampire as a child has, like, a weird, like... Uh, I've not seen or read the vampire diaries. My wife explained it to me. It's like a character who, like, she was turned into a vampire. I think it's the vampire diaries at any rate. Oh, that's rad. Dive kick. Nothing wrong with a dive kick. Um. Oh, chapter eight. Okay. At our wall. Oh my god, there's so much more in between me and the vampire. God damn. Curious, isn't it? Love can be a powerful weapon, it seems, even to those who are dead. Laura has spared him. Though she has the power to take his life, she has given it back and all for love. Perhaps she remembers her true mother's arms around There's her, no possessive apostrophe on that mother's. She became this creature. Is it... Perhaps does she have she two moms? Because that's cool. Love, I'm with that. Lost to her heart all those years ago. A child's love is without bitterness or boundaries. A pure love. I wonder what will become of her, this lost soul, when we kill her We now, mother. huh? and send her to the pits of hell where she belongs. Um, yeah, there's a thing. I think it's Vampire Diaries. I want to say it's the... Robert is having some troubles launching Nirvana, I think. Um, I think it's Vampire Diaries. There's a child girl who was turned into a vampire at a young age, and she'll never mature into, like, you know, a woman. But, like... She's always interested in, in, you know, sex and being an adult and stuff. And, like, she keeps an adult human woman's body, like, corpse, and just, like, looks at it. And she's like, man, one day if I could have grown up, I could have had, like, a big bosom and, and stuff. 
I don't remember the details exactly. My wife explained it to me. <laughs> I don't like Anne Rice a lot. Neither does my wife, but that concept at least is interesting. There's a bit of that in the Highlander show as well, I think. I think it's a Highlander show. It's so strange that Highlander even has a show. Like, Highlander was had a good movie, right? That's kind of it. I don't think Highlander needed to have a franchise. Like, Highlander is one of those things where, like, of everything, it got turned into a franchise harder than almost anything else. Because, like... Highlander has a good movie, right? And then it has a sequel, and that movie is so terrible, and it's such a waste of time, and it's so bad that, like, it, it boggles the mind. It confuses people more than it entertains them. And then every movie after that is more like that movie. And some of them try to get back to the original, but, like, they've already broken that seal open, and none of them are as good. Whoa. That's cool. Good shot as well. Really lets us see the evil. See the skeleton man. And then like there was a Highlander cartoon and they tried to make Highlander video games and there was a Highlander TV show and like the TV show is alright I guess. Can you fuck off? Can I grab this guy? Thank you. The camera's so uh, pulled far out. Like, ugh. Oh, now he's doing his little skeleton thing. Just let him have it, boys. I totally should have tanked through that. Alright. The problem with that fight was that I had just started doing the... the puzzle. And they were like, no, you're fighting now. Don't you know? I think it'd be interesting to, like, have both. I know that, like, it's a binary state. You either have them off or on... Or the other one on? Yeah. Yeah. Two bloons, two blue runes on the left side. The runes closest to the door and furthest away match the color of the ones in front. At least one of the runes, which are farthest away from the door, is blue. Ugh. Okay, can I have some vampires to attack me now? Thank you. Wasting my time here. Like, I was 100% certain that, like, that level was going to end with... That level was going to end with, you know, me fighting, uh, me fighting the Vampire Queen. And yet, like, here we are.
Okay, I think I got him. Oh, that feels really good. Matt McMuscle said it before, and I think in reference to this game in particular, but like, if your game has a cool parry system, you will always have something to go back to it for, you know? Like, your game will have a parry system, and it'll interest people, just at the bare minimum. That is interesting. It's a cool concept. Give me a little bit of that. Thank you. Can I get you? I love that there's a little extendo thing on the end of the cross to let you. Radical. I guess I'll get those. They're free over here, though. Okay. The ones close to the door are blue. Hmm. What do you mean I can't go back? There's a little health thing over there that I want. Oh my god. It's so punitive. It's just punishing the player for no reason. All right. I don't feel like engaging with the challenge here because, like, go to hell. The way that, like, I know that it's going to checkpoint me to before I fought those guys, and I'm going to have to re-kill them. But it's also not letting me just go grab those things. And that's also bullshit. Sorry, just wanted to double check there. So it's blue, blue, red, 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 blue. Also, this animation takes forever. Like, I wasn't initially going to comment on it too hardcore, but like, now that I, I continue to do it, like, it takes like a full second. Like, think about like solving puzzles where you're like mashing buttons and using your mouse yeah, this is cool. Okay. Complaining time is over. This is radical. Oh my god, it looks so radical. Oh, it makes no sense. I don't know what the point of this stupid thing is here, but oh my god, it looks so cool. Oh, more puzzles. Yep. Well. Shut up, Patrick. You're worthless to me. I mean it. Like, you have done almost nothing this whole game. You helped me kill a guy. And, like, it was only thanks to Gabriel's cutscene incompetence that I had to have help killing him. Like, they have destroyed all the good wheel... Uh, the good wheel. The goodwill that I feel for having Patrick Stewart. Because, like, he's just annoying. And, like, that's a shame, because it's fucking Patrick Stewart, but, like, he's a he's annoying. His character's lame. Like, I like that the, uh, these little demon babies are at, like, the height of one jump. So, like, one jump will carry me up to their level, and then I can attack them from there. Okay, anybody? Nobody? Good. Glad to hear it. This is weird. Why wouldn't there just be a... Oh. Because it's a puzzle. I could jump over that. <laughs> Like, I could climb over that in real life. Oh, man. 
my idea is to like go through the door hole. Yeah, it worked. Well, hold on now. If you're going to do it to me like that, I don't trust it then. Okay, well then... See... Because I, I don't want to miss stuff, but like... When you give me a, a big thing like this, I'm always worried I will. The tower key... Mm-hmm. Looking at the wrong one. Nailed it. Oh, cool. I didn't know that you could grab it. I guess it has to be like mid animation. All right. One down. Getting too greedy. All right. Works for me. Yeah, like, there seems to be just a lot in this game that is, like, about punishing the player. About, like, making something punitive. Like saying, oh, you only went 90% of the way. That means that you have to watch it go back. And then watch it, you know, watch Gabriel put the animation thing down. And then you have to pick it back up again. And so, like, because you did something, like, 95% of the way and not 100%, you now take triple the time, you know? There's a bunch of animation things in, in this game. Like, already, th there's accusations of, like, oh, you went through the, the song and dance to kill a guy by hitting him with your sword a whole bunch, but you didn't do the little thing. You didn't do the thing to run up and do a little button mini game on his, on his corpse to make sure he stays dead, so now he miraculously somehow just gets more health and then you gotta you gotta watch him, you know, stand back up, and then you gotta go through his health bar again. And like that is definitely punitive. Games don't need something like that. It adds very little. Light magic, radical. Now, can I? Thank you. I will will it into the hole. Okay. Yeah, the way that this has been paced, I feel like I should have hit this already. I feel like I should have gotten the vampire, like, a level or two ago. Let's get that 3,000. Thank you. Okay. Again, these beautiful pencil animations. So high quality. I can't even draw in that level of quality. The vampire's mercy is playing on his thoughts. I see that clearly on his face. Perhaps Laura he's thinking, he's changing, he's becoming, Claudia. he's Seeing unfamiliar, his he's thinking. Marie again has brought it all back to him. Marie's love is all he has now, and the hope of holding her again, the only hope. He is close now, close to the bitch who commands That's so these vulgar. vampire vermin. That's hardly in character for Patrick fucking for Stewart. I'm vulgar, and I don't say bitch that much. She is powerful. She will try every trick in That's the book so to vulgar. To That's so cause. out of character. That takes me right there out of it. Oh, my God. just the of the clockwork tower to overcome first. Another mad invention of Frankenstein that I hope will only delay his sweet revenge. 
And also, because of the weird way that this journal is written, I feel like, um... Because of the weird way this journal is, is written, it's like, in the past and the future, like, he's written it like it's already happened. But he doesn't know the thing that immediately comes after it. So, like, chapter 8, level 1 happens, right? And, and uh, uh, Patty Stu has written a, a journal entry about, you know, the end of chapter 7. Okay, so... Uh-huh. And then, after we finish Chapter 8, Level 1, Patty Stu has written a journal entry about that. And then we start Chapter 8, Level 2, and then we have a journal entry about that already written. Like, when is he getting time to write these? And, like, they're written in a way where it's like, they're in the... The, the level that you just did was in the past... he also doesn't know what came afterwards because if this whole game was in media res and like the whole thing was oh yes I remember when he did this thing one time that was a crazy weekend anyway here's the entire story like a Prince of Persia that's fine but like that isn't what's been happening what has been happening isn't what has been happening like that's not correct <laughs> Dude, what do you mean? Oh my fucking god. See, now, like, so much of that platforming was just waiting. So much of it was not actually doing platforming stuff. And if the whole thing was platforming, then I, I would be fine and it would be okay and I wouldn't care that I have to go all the fucking way back. But because I need to now wait for the platform to come back and then wait for the platform to carry me back over and then wait for that platform so I can make another attempt on this jump. Oh my fucking god, go to hell. There's so much in this game that is so punitive. It's not fun. <laughs> like, Castlevania is built on whipping and jumping. That was what the first game's ethos was. That was the whole point of the first game. And the whipping is fine. I'm happy with the whipping. I'm perfectly content with the amount of whipping that I'm doing and how fun it is. But the jumping is bad. So many of these are just, you may as well be watching an auto scroller or a movie or like, you know, some Nathan Drake Uncharted platforming shit, just crawling on the outside of something. And that's not as cool. And it's not used for anything like it is used in God of War 4. And then the rest of the jumps are just really lame. Like, may I be the first to say, Ugh. I'm salty at the end of this episode, but I still had a fun time recording. I hope you had a fun time watching, because I did. I had a fun time making it. I hope you enjoyed. I've been Alfred. I hope you had a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye.